Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How is everybody? I trust that you all well. This is the day that the Lord has made, Amen. and we will rejoice and be glad in, in it. it. And we're glad in Him. Hallelujah. So we're glad to join you on this Friday afternoon. Today's the 1st of May. May Day, May Day, May Day. <laughs> 1st of May, 2020, at uh, 2.30 South African time. So we welcome you as you join us now. It's good to have you with us. Welcome from all over South Africa and all over the world, wherever you come from, we just welcome you. And we just uh, enjoy walking this path out with mm. you guys, walking the road with you. As the Lord is busy, Reese, uh, basically, he's busy with his church while we're underwater here. Shalom, the church. <laughs> Moi no. We welcome you, as a Dominic. So we just, um, we just are walking on this path as the Lord. Remember when we looked at the vision the other day, and when the wave comes, we basically are submerged. So yeah. the church is submerged the, officially across the world, even in phase, well, we, what are we in phase four now? Yeah, level four. Level four, whatever, whatever they want to call means. it. How's it, Gusto? Francois? Good afternoon. Um, at this level, we still, the church is still not allowed to gather on Sundays. Well, I that, think only on level two or one, or something like that. Okay, it's, so basically it's like, know. And uh, like I said yesterday, we saw uh, on South African TV or SABC, there was like a, a header there that said eight months. Okay, so that's still December. They're planning to roll yeah. this, or let's call it stretch it out. Okay, so we just want to make a clear declaration in the spirit. And we just say we're not accepting the plan of the devil for this country, South Africa. And you mustn't accept the the, the, the the plan of the devil for your city and your country, wherever you are. And so we just yeah. say, Corona it is not, not in Jesus' name. Amen. Right now, we say the back of this thing is, is broken. Good. Right now, in Jesus' name. We praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. What was that word yesterday in the other language? Corona. It's neat. No. <laughs> in one of the African languages, I can't remember. Amba. Uh, no, yeah, that's good too. <laughs> it was such a good one. I must... Uh, yeah, <laughs> hallelujah. Yeah, all the languages. Remember, yesterday we were proclaiming, hallelujah, Corona is not. Mm. How's it, Rian? Hallelujah. <laughs> we, corona is not. It is not. And in Dutch? It's neat. Yeah, and we were doing it in all the languages. <laughs> I like it. All right. Yeah. It's neat. Hallelujah. So we, we, we're excited that the Lord is still on the throne. Amen. He who sits in the heavens laughs. So we just... Just rely on Him now. Let's just just ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we come to you and we just yeah. we just welcome you again into our homes right now. We ask you for revelation of Jesus. We ask you to anoint us now. We thank you that it's your anointing within mm -hmm. us that teaches us all things that we need to yeah. know. And so, Lord Jesus, it is your anointing that teaches us everything. By the Spirit of revelation, Amen. we receive the Spirit of revelation. In the knowledge of you, Lord Jesus. Yes. So we thank you, Lord, right now for the spirit of revelation. Hallelujah. We bless you now, Father. We thank you for the spirit of revelation. Just just praying tongues now, wherever you are, just praying tongues. Thank you. Just tap in right now. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord, for the spirit of revelation. Yes. In the knowledge of you, Lord yes. Jesus. We pray, Father, that that you would give us, Lord, you would give us that spirit of wisdom and revelation in the yes. knowledge of your Son Amen. right now in Jesus' name, according to Ephesians 1, 17, Lord, and, and verse 18 says, and that, Father, that the eyes of our understanding might be enlightened. Ask Him to uh, enlighten the eyes of your understanding, mm. Lord Jesus, not just our minds, not our, just our thoughts, but our spirits right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because faith comes into your heart. Hallelujah. So we thank you, Father. Hallelujah. There we go. Yeah. Siena Aziko. Hallelujah. Yeah, the, the little C. Little C. Little C. But little the, C. The, C. Um, Hallelujah. La la yeah, Lapasai. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Corona Lapasai. Corona Aiko. Aiko. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So right now, Father, we thank you for the spirit of revelation. And that we might, might be enlightened, that we may know what is the hope of our calling, because this is about the hope of your calling and the hope of our calling. There's a hope of our calling. And, and, and so the, the hope of our calling is to know Him. That's the hope of our calling. The hope of our calling is to abide in His presence, enter into His glory mm -hmm. through what we call the divine encounter, where we are called 
to divinely encounter God, to abide in His presence, because revival is about the dwelling place of God. He's going to be amongst us. His name is Emmanuel. God with us, God in us, and God through us. Hallelujah. So revival is going to be different to any revival that man has ever experienced on this earth, the church has ever experienced. It is going to be different because this is the dwelling place. It's not, oh, there, you've got to go there. God is going to come and dwell in your house. Okay, and so that's what we're going to be talking about today, that the Lord is going to come and dwell in your house. So um, if you want to turn in your Bibles, and we're going to look at um, a few scriptures. We're looking at Amos. Go to Amos 911. Chapter 9, verse 11, 911. So when you see 911, you know it's urgent, okay? Did, did, did. You hear the alarm, the siren is going off. 911. Hallelujah, Patricia from Ireland, welcome. Awesome. Thank you, Lord Jesus, right now, in Jesus' name. So now. Amen. Fully rely on God. On that right. day, he says, I will raise up the tabernacle of David. On that day, God is going to raise up. The tabernacle of David, which has fallen down and repair its damages, and I will raise up its ruins and rebuild it as in the days of the of old. Okay, so God is promising to rebuild the tabernacle of David, that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord who does this thing. Now, a few days ago, we we I think it was on. Um, the, the one on uh, basically either number seven or eight or number six, I can't, can't, can't remember now, when I basically we shared that whole uh, worn glory vision of Rick Joyner. You can go it was back. Five. Oh, was it five? Oh, okay. Think, but I can All right. Now, I'm not so sure. That was a spirit of, uh, that was a baptism of the Holy Spirit, I think. Okay. But oh, anyway, oh. go back and look <laughs> at that one. If you haven't listened to it, it's very, very important. And go and study that prophetic yeah. calendar because that is so significant because you've got to know where it's you amazing. are so i just go i keep go, referring back to it so that's why you're going to keep going and i keep going back that's a timeline so first of all what happened was he comes to the island he sees that the church is basically built in man's pattern it's a mess and there's it's two principalities over the island not jesus this over is the, the island over the other yeah. no well the island is is, is the church okay mm. they're ruling the whole thing and, and it's jealousy and, and fear, okay? Mm. So what happens is the, whole, the church is just attacking one another. So a civil war in the church, which we've seen for the last how many years? 50 years. And now the Lord hears the cry of the lost and he says, okay, he can't let the lost into the church, the church of Jesus Christ in the earth. Oh, revival. Now this is the condition for revival. He can't let them in. Because we are going, when they come to the church, he says, you're going to mess with these people. And I'm not going to let you mess with the people. So he's holding them back. The revival has been contained. And, and, and a lot of people say, okay, we're experiencing revival. There is a spirit of revival released. But the end time harvest has not yet been released yeah. by the Lord. Okay. Um, because the church is not in position and the church is not built according to God's structure. So this is about heavenly structures. So what happens is he, he then allows the four winds of the earth, okay? These demons, these demon, princi actually demons, principalities, release the attack against the earth, mm -hmm. against the church, and the church is now basically covered with a, with a wave. Actually, it basically just submerges. Submerged, yeah. And when it comes up again, the whole church is basically demolished. Mm -hmm. The whole church is demolished. I'm talking the structure, the organizations, completely demolished, Don't okay? And the Lord allowed this because that was his judgment on the system. He's putting the judgment of God. It's like this rock that's coming to crush the system. Mm. And so what happens is God is against the system that we've made it. We've made it a religious system. And Jesus is not happy with the system because when people get saved, they're not getting discipled. They're not getting to know Christ. They, they're coming into really more of a marketing network. And they're coming into the system of Babylon, which is business and religion. And so what the Lord is doing, He's going to destroy this. He's busy destroying it right now. And, and he's, uh, we, we're watching Him destroy it. We're watching, actually, the, the enemy is destroying it. Remember, with one of the judgments of the Lord is He allowed the enemy in. Uh, when Israel got out of line, He allowed the enemies to defeat them in battle. Okay. So we don't want to be uh, in, you know, as a church, we... We are we are need to know where what is the Lord doing with us and what what He's doing with the world, what He's doing with the church. 
And so what happens is this huge wave comes over and the whole church is demolished. And now he steps into the middle of the island. And now obviously the principalities that were over the island were displaced. Now only, you see, you can't just, okay, remove a principality and then leave it because they'll just come back. So the Lord, only the Lord can remove principalities and powers over regions and over nations. You understand? You start... Don't think you've got the authority to just start removing demons, uh, principalities. You can, your yeah, combat, you combat, you can remove the demons of your property in your house, mm, but mm. don't mess with those principalities over nations. And lots of people yeah, will start yeah. talking about, I'm binding this, and I heard someone the other day binding the dragon over China. I thought, those are dangerous well, things. No, yeah. no, that's extreme. That's yeah. dangerous to your health, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah, so when I see that, just a matter of immaturity, because now I don't think you, the dragon actually is Satan. So if you think mm. you're going to be able to bind Satan, uh, uh, no, if you think you, if you, think you can, uh, you are deceived. Yeah. Uh, you, you understand? You know how easy it would be? We can just all come together in agreement, bind him, and yeah. then he's, uh, and we could bind, if you could bind Satan, uh, <laughs> uh, then it's easy. We just bind him and then it's over. It's like it's over. over. No, and all the princes are, bind them all. Bind, uh, bind it. And then we can all relax. Do you understand? So yeah. the problem is coming from basically immaturity and pride. Um, and and I, was, I, was, I shared the scripture with Miriam the other day and someone else I shared the scripture with. Uh, that intercessors don't understand what's called your metron and your limit of authority. Yeah. And this, this is something so we need yeah. to really teach on. So I'm just going to... Yeah. Uh, and I... I gave Mary a scripture. I don't think she's ever like looked at that scripture before. But this this scripture is is such an important thing that we. I just want to touch on this to- topic because now I'm talking about binding principalities. Um, so, oh, yes. you know when I we remember, uh, yeah. this is now Jude. If you go to Jude nine, this this was really an eye opener for yeah. me. I'd never heard this. This, this uh, is a this yeah. This, this is way. this is major. So it says yeah. Okay, so. Um, it says here, like, verse 8, Likewise also these dreamers defile the flesh, reject authority, and speak evil of dignity. So it's talking about people that are like kind of out of control, what they're doing. But one of the things that, you know, they do is they speak evil of dignities. In other words, don't go talking about the devil in a, in a, in a way that is not scriptural. You're going to get in, because he's the accuser of the brethren. The moment yeah. you say, you know, call him some, some name, that... He's not in the word. You can call him a thief because the Bible calls him a thief. But don't start giving him names that the Bible doesn't do. Because yeah, what yeah, happens good, is yeah. you're stepping out of line. And, and these principalities have got and been permitted by God into their positions. Exactly, yeah. If they get out of position, God will remove them and put them in everlasting chains. And they cannot move out of there. Yeah. But ultimately, at the end of the day, you're not allowed to just uh, shift principalities uh, in your authority, it's got to be the Lord that yeah. does that. And it's the Lord that instructs that. And it's the Lord that instructs those principalities. He sends angels and they, and he sorts them out. And he's going to shift principalities. And he's going to do this. And he's, okay, but ultimately it says here, Yet Michael the archangel in contending with the devil when he disputed about the body of Moses. So here we have a dispute. Basically a dispute Okay, where they were contending over the body of Moses. So you must know how important the body, the bones of Moses was, mm. that Michael and the devil are fighting over the bones. I mean, All right, there's another whole story there. Yeah, okay, yeah. no, I'm saying you must it's understand. Like, why, what, 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 what's the, a, why must Moses' bones, bones. Well, you know, because remember his bones have to be moved. Yeah. And so what happens is, ultimately, yeah. And, and also now it's like, you know, Moses was commanded to go to the top of the mountain and die. And so now there's an argument about the bones between Satan and Michael. Now, Michael is the chief archangel in charge of God's army. I mean, obviously reporting to Jesus, but he's like the chief of the army. OK, and listen to what it says now. Now, yet Michael, the archangel in contending with the devil, when he disputed about the body of Moses, dared not bring against him that's the devil mm. a reviling accusation he never brought a reviling accusation he was he, he said dare not 
You must understand that, that he, dead. They, they, no, dead not. Why? Because he understands the legal implications upon himself. Now we are talking about backlash, side lash, and whiplash. So you've got a lot of oh, Christians. I find it. Yeah, you've got a lot of Christians that are in serious trouble. They've got some, seriously, sometimes yeah. it's a disease that comes upon you and you don't understand what you did wrong. Yeah, yeah, and and yeah. it's like God is not judging you, but what happens is you've opened the massive door because you've stepped out of your metron you yeah. you've, you've stepped out of your metron and he and 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 so michael says to him he doesn't bring an accusation against him he doesn't say you're an idiot you're an idiot or whatever he just says to him sure. under the instruction of jesus he says the lord rebuke you four words the lord rebuke you now because michael says to satan the lord rebuke you doesn't mean you can actually now start speaking to Satan there and saying the Lord rebuke you over South Africa. Oh, no. No, no. I'm just saying some people like to do these things. Ooh, and then, <laughs> no, no, then they go bankrupt. Then yeah. they're losing any money and everything like that. And then another door as well as I see people, I see Christians, they like to steal. And so what happens is when I say steal, pirated music, pirated books, and I, and I think it's their right. It's like, this is stealing. Uh, you must understand the accuser of the brethren is looking so careful, to yeah. accuse you day and night. So please don't start putting out PDFs of books on the internet and saying this is free. Because I can tell you now, if you go and Google any book you like, you can get it for free. Uh, absolutely. Just no. because it's free, even music, yeah. doesn't mean it's Christian not stolen. <laughs> no, it doesn't mean it's not stolen. You yeah. understand? Those guys yeah. put it on their website yeah. and say, oh, you can get it. Oh, I got it on the internet. Mm -hmm. When yeah, there's a there's copyright a on the book, I always look at the copyright and most yeah. of them say, you're not allowed to duplicate this thing. Yeah. On our books, even the two, we only sell two books, the rest is all for free. Everything, almost everything we even put a copyright yeah. on there and we say, you must just copy it right and don't <laughs> sell it yeah. for profit. In other yeah. words, you can actually now go and print it if you want, whatever. So we're not telling people that, but we've got a specific copyright on our books. Every book you write, there's an automatic copyright on anything you write, anyone. Okay, you don't have to copyright in some head office. It is an international law of copyright. If that pastor or person decides he's copywriting and he's going to only sell his book, you and I are not the ones to judge him and say he's supposed to give it away for free, freely you receive, freely you give, all that kind of stuff. It's like, I'm not his judge. And if he, if he puts a lock on it yeah, and copyrights yeah. it, it's like, okay, I'll have to trust God for the $10 or the $12 to buy the book. You understand that? So let's not open the door when it comes to stealing music, mm. all right, and stealing books, all right. And, and, and even they're putting the books on, that on YouTube. It's like, do you understand what's going on here? Because this somebody did a recording, so someone just takes the copies and put it on there. So it is a very, it's a, it's kind of what you call a gray area. And, yeah. and, the, and, and so what happens is let's not even go there. But where I was going is that we mustn't step out of line when it comes to authority, and we must understand, where do we have authority? You must know where you've got authority. Your authority is where God has placed you. Number one, you've got authority over your entire house, your property. Okay, wherever you're living, if you're renting, buying, whatever, you, you've got a property. So if a demon walks into your house, you can tell it to get out. I, I don't care if Satan himself walks into your house you can t you just tell satan to get out that's to say mm -hmm. about if satan i mean he's not going to just go and venture around to everyone's house he's not omnipresent so he's not walking around to everyone's house but let's say he did come to your house because you that you that let's say that you're that important okay because he, you know i know he, he's not wandering around just messing around with people that are not giving him a big problem but if he did come to your house you got authority to just tell him to get off your property mm -hmm. and he has to listen mm -hmm. okay because then he's out of line but if you go to his property and you go somewhere and you see him, you say, okay, I just buy, oh, I can tell you now, yeah. I have got the stripes on this one. I did yeah. this. I was binding principalities, major principalities at the, uh, um, the major altar of Satan in South Africa, which is the uh, Vojtoka Monument. I was binding it on a, on a daily basis. Major principalities like the Queen of Heaven. I, I lost my whole family. You understand, yeah. I'm not messing around here. I lost my whole family. I lost so much. I didn't know what had hit me because I was trained incorrectly by certain intercessors from Africa and they just bound anything and moved. Yeah. And then I saw what happened to them as well. So ultimately the fallout from, um, from, from ignorant and unwise mm -hmm. and prideful intercession and spiritual warfare is caused a huge amount 
of, of wounding uh, and a huge amount of casualties. Mm. No, uh, unnecessary. Suffering. Okay, so now we need to know what, what is our authority. Yeah? Um, Erica is asking, do I have authority over my husband's demons, for example? Well, you got authority. Stuff. Yeah, you got authority over your house. Now, look, you, when it comes to, you can bind, let's say, if you're praying for your husband, you can bind those demons over him. If he keeps opening the door, you're going to have a continual backwards and forwards yeah. because he's got authority over his own demons. And if he, if he likes them, <laughs> yeah, understand. That's the problem if you cast one out and they come back in. Yeah, so you, 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 yeah. So it's in other words, you can actually bind them to has a, have an effect over the house. But ultimately, the the, mm. the the thing, the issue here is authority. Who's got the authority of his own body? Is his, your husband? Okay, so you can now go to war against those demons. All right, over your family, which is fine, mm. because you got authority of your family. So I would mm. say yes, you can actually go against them. I'm not yeah. going to say how, how long it's going to work. You know, when you bind a demon, how long does it? How, how long are they bound for? Mm. <laughs> okay, so what happens is it's like okay, are they bound forever? All right, sure. so yeah. ultimately yeah. we cannot control our husband's will. No. All right, we can we cannot control the will. All right. Okay. I've learned to hand my husband over. <laughs> So the better way to do it is to actually know hand them that over. They can sort them out. Surrender your husband to Jesus and say, Jesus, you deal with yeah. his heart. Because that's only how, that's how I've learned when your husband pray. or your wife surrenders, yeah. can the Lord work through their heart? Because he's not yeah. going to force your husband to follow him. Yeah. Okay. So yes, you can lessen the attack of the enemy. Mm. And if the demons are like attacking you th through your husband or something, you can just, yeah, I would, I would bind those demons. If it's a spirit of strife or whatever it is, jealousy, you can bind it. No problem. You can bind it. How effective it's going to be, it, de it, it depends on a whole lot of things. But I don't want to go into 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 d down this whole path now. I'm just saying, be careful of stepping out of your authority. I've seen people killed, killed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And seriously, we've seen people die. I've seen international people yeah. get sick and never recover. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because what I see is what I watch. What people pray, I watch what they say. I watch, and it's like, and I'm not going to agree with those prayers. So you must be careful. You get a video and mm. some person is praying this very wonderful prayer. So it seems. And they put in a phrase there. It's like, like a bomb. And it's like. Yeah. So be careful. Yeah. Be yeah. careful. Because if you agree with that person that just bound the dragon. You understand. You're out of line. Mm. You're out of line. Just as I bind the dragon. It's like. You're going to this is why as leaders we've got to be so careful when we give instructions to intercessors and, and come with word and prophetic word to lead intercessors into a battle that is actually not theirs to fight. But then but they get the backlash. They, <laughs> they heed that voice and they respect that, yeah, that prophet or whoever. Yeah, you got prophets. That I... They get led into a battle and we've seen this over and over and we, we've spoken about it previously, but they get led into a battle that they are not supposed to fight. Therefore, get wounded, so and the results are be, disastrous. Be very careful when people start to lead you in prayer, when it comes to warfare. I don't care who they are. Yeah. You must understand that you, they might mm -hmm. be able to get away with it, or maybe they've got that authority or something like that. But don't just, don't just. I'm talking spiritual warfare. Yeah. Look, if we're going to pray, okay, let's pray that God, you know, give us wisdom and understanding. Mm -hmm. That's not warfare. That's petition. Mm -hmm. But when you start to go for principalities. I'm very, I'm, I'm, I'm very alert. I say, oh, oh, oh Lord, I, I have nothing to do with that. <laughs> I'm not in that one. Mm. I'm not in agreement. I, I'm not in agreement with everything they pray. Mm. You understand? Mm. So yeah. uh, this is for your protection because there's a lot of people that are overstepping the mark and then basically you don't know and then they come Even and you find so out that hey, they are getting attacked in their bodies, in their finances, and it's going for years. But you don't know what they've been praying on this mountain and that hill over there, blowing that shofar there. But that's what I praying the most ridiculous, yeah. dangerous, let's call it dangerous, really dangerous, prayers and proclamation. Is what I see in that scripture is that um, Michael understood the protocol of heaven. Well, there's this is certain, this is authority. He understands exactly. his, his, his he level of his, authority. His and there's a protocol, <laughs> but he understood it. He, he, he says he dared not bring a reviling ac yeah. accusation. It's like, whoa, what do you mean dared not? I mean, isn't Michael That's like right. stronger and righteous and the devil? You could say, oh, you little rubbish. Yeah, you would think, yeah. Yeah, no, 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 no. no. There's a yeah. whole, you see, the the, the the devil likes to set you up and get you to sin. And then he accuses you and then he attacks your finances. Yeah. He attacks your body and you don't know what hits you. Okay, so you can be in this little intercession group 
on a mountain and it's all anointed and one person says the wrong thing okay and you agree with him and you say yeah 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 just uh, you bind him up put 10 stones on his head and laugh at him and then you get reported you get reported and then you get a house visit and then you get attacked and then you don't understand yeah. that pride comes before the fall. Yeah. Okay. So that is a warning. Please not go there. I don't, I don't even know how I got here now. But anyway, here we are. Uh, yeah. it, it was a bunny trail, but it was a good trail. <laughs> the, the word that, uh, the word dared not bring against him. That is actually the word for boldness. Yep. Yeah. All right. That's, yeah. That's, yeah. Okay. He dared not. So listen to this. I agree with you. I saw someone said we mustn't go outside where the Holy Spirit leads us. But yeah, oh, yeah. but here's the problem. A lot of people are led by their desires and they say it's the Holy Spirit. So let me give you a little mm. guideline here. You cannot go beyond the word and neither will the Holy Spirit. Amen. I do not believe everyone that says the Holy Spirit says the Holy Spirit says the Holy Spirit says the Holy Spirit. I'd say I had tea. I had to have green tea. Then I had a red t-shirt. Then I had the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. And every second thing they say, Holy Spirit. It's like, yeah. Yeah. Is that necessary even to say all that? Holy Spirit said, God said, God said, the Lord said, the Lord said. Literally, like like in an hour, they'd say 10 times, 20 mm. times. Like, the Lord said, the Lord said, the Lord said. Then I'm very careful now. Everything the Lord said, I'm thinking, mm. I wonder how many of those the Lord said, the Lord did say. Because who am I to argue now? The yeah. Lord said. But let me tell you, when you say the Holy Spirit is leading you, He will never lead you outside of the truth. Absolutely. True. So yeah. the problem yeah. is that yeah. You've got people out there, especially intercessors, or are radical for the Lord. They don't know the they don't know the Bible. <laughs> they don't know the Bible. I'm talking sixty six books. They have got limited knowledge on the Word, and so they get into trouble because they go out of the Word of God. Boom, and the devil hits you. Mm -hmm. So do not say the Holy Spirit led me, and it's not it's not in line with the Scripture. And that's the problem. We have people saying, "Oh yes, the Holy Spirit led me." Now, you, yeah. you, uh, there, are, there are obvious th things like, you know, the Holy Spirit led me and, uh, you know, he said I must go and marry this guy and he's already married. Mm -mm. No, no, okay, we, that's an obvious one. The guy's married and, he, you know, so it's like, but that actually happens in churches. The Holy Spirit led me to sin, basically. But when it comes to his intercessors, they say, the Lord led me to go out there, blow the shofar and do this and do this and do this. But maybe, yes, he led you to do that, but he didn't give you... The 15 steps you took, he might have just led you up there and maybe yeah. you missed the, you missed, you missed three steps. Mm. But once you step out of line in warfare, yeah. the only thing you can down. do right now <coughs> is repent. Please repent. Get your head down. You better repent Stay and say, down. oh Lord, please forgive me for my pride. Yeah. For, here's another sin. Presumption, which yeah. is based on pride. Presumption. Yeah. You're presumptuous. Yeah. You think you're going to just basically bind the dragon. Mm -hmm. It's like, excuse mm -hmm. me, who do you think you are? You understand? If it was that simple, Jesus died on the cross. He could have bound the devil. We would have wrapped this thing up long ago. All the demons bound. He could have bound, he bound them. He's allowed them to, and left them there so they can test us. Yeah. Understand? They've got a purpose. <laughs> you understand? Mm -hmm. They've got a purpose. Yeah. Uh, it's called yeah. the fiery trials. Hallelujah. Yeah, so yeah. now we need to understand our level of dominion and authority. Okay, and the Bible says we've got authority over all the power of the devil. Mm. So that's the only scripture some people know. Okay, I've got the power of the, all the power of the devil and nothing by any means will hurt me. You know, uh, Luke, I'm quoting Luke 10, 19 now. And uh, I can trample on so, uh, scorp, uh, so, scorpions and serpents. Mm. And then they take that scripture out of context, out of pride, and they will do any proclamation and any binding and any using they want based on that one scripture but they, they don't understand something called the metron the metron is your your yeah. sphere of authority, authority. Yeah. all right do you understand you've got no business binding and taking authority of a demon to cape town if god hasn't called you to unless cape town you to do that, no no yeah. no unless god's called you to cape town. exactly then yeah. you've got authority Okay, and so another thing is the demons that are controlling Cape Town over the principalities, they they can only be taken out by by the by the the unified church in Cape Town. Yeah, that's why it's so important when you're traveling and, and meeting with other churches to actually approach the. the and that's why the Satan knows that because that's why he keeps the church divided because yeah. actually 
I've yet to see a city that has actually had the authority to, to remove the principality sitting on top of the head. And that is in the the war and glory vision. As they grew in the authority, yeah. they, they eventually had authority. They have authority. Authority. You have authority on a greater, greater dimension through yeah. unity. Okay, so you get these little bands. Five intercessors goes there. This one goes there. And these people are, yeah. are, are suffering tremendous backlash. And you can pray all you like against backlash. It, it, it ain't going to work if you open the door. Mm. <laughs> got to close the door first. You've got to repent. Because yeah. otherwise, what's backlash? Where in the Bible? It says backlash, backlash will come. come. No. The Bible does promise persecution, tribulation for the word's sake. But where does it talk about backlash? You know what I mean? Where does it say that you are going to get backlash from the devil when you go on a mission? No, mm -hmm. it says you're going to get a, attacked. You'll, tri you'll have tribulations. You'll have this persecution, everything like that. Mm -hmm. But when we're getting a backlash, that basically means the door was open. The devil comes in and he does something in your house. Boom. He steals your finances. He steals your health. And it's like, all right, so maybe you should backtrack with the back backlash and backtrack and say, where did I... Holy Spirit, where did I miss it? Where did I overstep the mark? Yeah. You understand? True. Yeah. There are boundaries here. And the demons know their boundaries. And if you start pushing your boundaries, they're going to say, hey, hey, yeah. you can just do it. He's stepping right outside the line here. Who does he think he is? Report him. Yeah. Okay, he's outside the line. Whack you. And therefore, it's not working for you anymore. It's a very sad thing. And I see lots of people battling because they're actually under backlash mm -hmm. for 10 years. Yeah, mm -hmm. I see Dorit is, Dorit is asking a question. The most hurt I've ever experienced in my life was because of people saying that the Lord said, Chris, could you do a teaching on what is what happens after divorce? May I ever get married again? Oh. <laughs> I do not know how to pray. Do I pray for my ex or do I still pray for him? All right, so now that's another whole story. Is, yeah, it, I think... All right, so divorce and remarriage is another whole topic. Okay, yeah. so all I can say is, do, um, I just want to ask you one question. All right? Is divorce the unforgivable sin? Yes or no? And if you can show me that divorce is the unforgivable sin, then I say that you don't have, you can never get married again. Okay. The next question is, what is the unforgivable sin? Come on, everybody. What is the unforgivable sin? The blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. You got it? So you got to understand, divorce is not the unforgivable sin. God doesn't want us to divorce. But actually, but what, so people take scriptures and they're going to use scriptures and they say anyone that's divorced can't minister. Mm. Well, in that case, then God can't minister. Mm. Do you understand? Do you know that God is divorced? It says in the Bible He's divorced. Do you know that God is divorced? He divorced Israel. Go and look it up. All right. So you got it. All right. There we go. So, uh, okay. So ultimately, right. So basically, it's not unforgivable sin and God forgives those that divorce okay at the end of the day but when you want to divorce and you're going to divorce for and it's not scriptural reasons if you're going to divorce for unscriptural reasons you're going to have to go through months of practicing sin and that's yeah. that's another story you don't understand if you're going to just divorce because you don't like your husband and you're not getting on and i'm not talking about if he's committing adultery or she's committing adultery because mm -hmm. the bible says that's, that's it yeah. but even if you do divorce and there's no adultery god can still forgive you but don't mess with it because you, when you make a covenant, you should set it out. So I'm not condoning divorce at all. I'm saying you should actually work it through. Mm. Um, and you should suffer. And you, you, you actually made the covenant. So now mm. I'm saying you've got to suffer. It's called long suffering. Work out your, your, your salvation yeah. with fear and trembling. So I believe people get divorced too quickly. Okay? Uh, I'm not talking about scriptural divorce where the person is actually now committing adultery. Okay? But even if you did get divorced and there wasn't adultery, God can forgive you. Okay? But there's... There's always consequences for everything we do in disobedience. There's always consequences. And, uh, and God says, God is not mocked. Whatever man sows, he shall reap. So if you've got some people deliberately divorcing people, and they couldn't care what God says, and then they move on, they're going to divorce another person, and they're all Christians. It's like, don't, don't mess with that. So, so, so we've got to walk in the fear of God. Yeah. And I, but I'm, I'm just saying divorce is not the unforgivable sin. All right? Neither is lying. Mm. But the Bible does say that lies are going to hell. Okay, people that practice, sorry, practice a lie will go to hell. Those are born again people practicing lying, they're going to go to hell. You understand? So you, you don't want to be practicing any sin, whether it's, you know, whatever it is. Okay, 
Um, and there's only really one, the Bible's clear on, on, on the reason to get divorced. Okay. So ultimately, but if you do, he can forgive you. Okay. So hopefully that helps you. All right. So now we got to understand that God is the God of grace and forgiveness and divorce is not the unforgivable sin. And he does restore. I mean, you, and he you, does you, restore. You uh, I mean, okay. So in my case, I mean, uh, my, my ex-wife divorced me. I didn't divorce her in South Africa. You can divorce someone if you don't live in like the dog. So ultimately, if someone, I was divorced. I, I didn't, I didn't divorce. Okay. My, my ex-wife divorced me. And so I could knew, I couldn't stop it at the end of the day. Because I, I never wanted a divorce. I said, we can work it out. We Christians, whatever. She didn't want to know about it. So I had to let her go. And, and, and that's it. And then I thought my whole, my whole ministry was gone. And this is now 20 years ago. It's like, I thought, that's it. That's the end of my life. As far as everything is concerned now, what must I just die now? Because I'm divorced. I can't minister anymore. And then God had to teach me and set me free and explain to me, okay, first of all, I never divorced her. Mm. And then some, and the people that want to reject you over your divorce or remarriage, that's the issue. That's it. It's like, mm. just like, I just move on. I just, there are so many people that need Jesus. There are so many yeah. people that will listen. I'm not worried about the ones that are fighting me because I just, I, I just literally bless them. Yeah. And ignore them, and sometimes block them. <laughs> bless and block. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, yeah. I just bless and block. There you go. Boom. No, seriously, I'm not going to start arguing. If yeah. you want to yeah. argue, I just block. I said no. I'm not. Gonna... Look, I, I was very good at arguing, but I've, I've, I've had to put that thing down because my flesh loves to have a, mm, an I think argument. All of our flesh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, oh, I mean we do. <laughs> so I'm not going to argue with you. Yeah. It's like if people, if you don't want to see, you might be listening and say, "Oh no, yeah. goodness, he's divorced." Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, then you, you, in your mind, oh no, he's not holy like you. I'm not holy like yeah, because you're not divorced. No, you're, mm. It's like, excuse me, mm. you don't even my, know my situation. So let's not go and judge people at all. Exactly. Because yeah. you don't know their story. It's not my job to judge. you got to basically watch the person's fruit in their life and you got to test the word to see if it lines up with the word of God. Yeah. At the end of the day, my judge is the Lord. Hallelujah. Mm. I can't even judge myself correctly because I can't see properly. So I ask the Lord to judge me. Okay, and ultimately, um, that my authority is my family and my, and my house and, and the ministry. That's the area of authority, and anything that God puts under my authority, that's the that's my area of dominion. If yeah. I'm in a certain uh, trade or market, I've got authority in that trade to a degree to pray over those markets in the in the in in the nation wherever I've got authority. So if I'm in in a national business and it's like in the uh, you know, I've been in the detergent market, so I've got authority in that area. But I haven't got authority in the transport industry. You understand? So I've got authority in the detergent industry, but not the transport industry. So when I pray, I pray in my metron. You've got to be very yeah. focused. Okay, as far as your, your metron is concerned. Okay, so, um, all right. <laughs> okay, hopefully that's helping you. Hallelujah. And that you can get, get free. And if you've sinned, and you did divorce because of the wrong reasons. You just say, Lord, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Okay, I'm not going to... Dr. Red said she, she, did not want, she didn't want to get divorced and did everything she could to prevent Yeah, it. well, I've been there as well. So, so I had to go. That's why I've got a whole teaching yeah. on overcoming pain. Go, yeah. go and listen to that. That's where those teachings came out of. Yeah, my, my, I mean, I've got different... I mean, where do you go and see a whole series of teaching anywhere on overcoming pain? It's I'm not like a... Overcoming Pain Conference. Yeah, Overcoming Pain Conference. <laughs> so, so, so basically... We specialize in overcoming pain. Oh, we have yeah. been through extreme, I'm talking emotional pain, okay? Yeah. Not the physical pain, emotional pain, which is much worse than the physical. When you go through that, yeah. it's, it's just, uh, yeah. you go through the dark night of the soul, not once, but many times, it does something to you. So you're either going to get harder or you're yeah. going to get softer. Yeah. All right, so go and listen to those teachings. If you've gone through pain and you're not healed, that just go really, overcoming really your pain, so, overcoming yeah. pain. Heart to Heart series. We've got the whole story I'll, there. I'll find the link. That's on our school of ministry. Okay, so you'd have to log in to be able to get those uh, those links. Marilyn will send you the links, but you can need to just register and log in to be able to access the material there. So, so, so okay, so we were talking about, all right, nine one one. All right, God is going to raise up the tabernacle of David, and today I'm really, <laughs> geez, I got on a an interesting track here. <laughs> like, I'm not um, <laughs> The focus, and I want to really focus on step number two. Remember step, okay, so we, there are basically four steps. Okay, four steps.
to building your ark. I'm not saying there's not five or six. I don't know. I'm not saying this is all the steps, but I'm saying there's four steps. He's, he's getting us to focus on now. Step one, building your own prayer altar. Your personal prayer life with the Lord. The most important thing of all, intimacy with the Lord, knowing the Lord. Okay. Okay. Not your quiet time. Okay. Right. Because that's why I don't talk, call it quiet time. Because it's not that quiet. It's not that quiet. If I've you say quiet it. time, it's, not it's not quiet. quiet. There's a time for quiet and there's a time for dancing. Is it, you right. understand? So you, I call it an hour of power or hours of power or divine encounter. But anyway, when I go and pray, I seek, I seek the Lord. This, yeah. It's not just quiet. So <laughs> some people just I say, no, no, no. Yeah. The Bible says we must make a joyful noise. So mm-hmm. there's a time for quiet, but it's not just quiet. All right. So you've got to have a good mix. Um, as as and, and, and based on the scripture, mm. and so that is your 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 foundation. Okay, yeah. knowing the Lord. Now, once you've got your personal prayer life in your in your family, now you got you got your your the father, your mother, and you got the children, mm. and they know how to pray. Okay, now when they're young children, they don't obviously don't know how to pray. So the only time they're going to pray, really, okay, when they're very small, is when you have a family prayer altar. And you're going to say, right now we're going to have a family prayer altar. We call it bow down. The reason we call it bow down is because we literally bow down around an ottoman that I've had for like more than 20 years. And we bow down there and we bow, all right, and we start and we start to pray. So I'm just going to go through that and give you some of the components that we have in that. I'm yet to actually release the videos on this and this will just be another video. But I just want to give you some help. I've got a to-do list that is growing, that is growing. So I, I need, I need. I think it's grace. growing every day lately. Uh, if I show you what I, I've got, list on list on list. Yeah. But anyway, I just try and uh, listen to the Holy Spirit every day and just do what He's telling me to do, what He, what I feel He's leading to me, leading me to do. Um, and so I can't say that everything I'm doing is the Holy Spirit said. I can tell you. I, I wish I could say that, you but, try. I, I, you try. but I, no, I don't want to lie. Okay, no, I don't want to lie. <laughs> so, exactly. so I could say I, I feel the Holy Spirit saying, but I can't say this is the Lord yeah. said. The Lord said, bake green no, potatoes. Be so the Lord said this. Like, oh, please, said, yeah. the Lord said. So let's not get get get. Just stop saying the Lord said, and only you reserve that when we're absolutely sure. And it's actually important to mm-hmm. say the Lord yeah. said. Thus says the Lord. But not everything we say, we must be able to put the Lord's name on it. Because we don't want to end up calling him a liar. Mm. Because he never said it. So then we get an accusation from Satan that the Lord never said that to you. But you know what? Whenever you say the Lord said, the devil knows exactly what the Lord said. Because he can see what he can hear. The Lord is saying this to you. He says, no, this is from the Lord or not from the Lord. He knows when it's from you. He can see it. You understand? So that is instant verification. He's going to know when you are lying. The devil will know because he's going to accuse you for lying. Yeah. He said, the Lord never said that to you. So why do we have to add the Lord's name onto everything? We can just say, I, I, just, I just feel that I need to do this. Or you can say, I believe the Lord say, in saying this. Or I sense mm-hmm. the Lord is saying this. Or I believe he's leading me mm-hmm. to do this. But be careful of people that everything they say, the Lord said. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking, whoa, whoa yeah. I'm going to stay away here because I'm very careful. Mm-hmm. Because otherwise, if they say the Holy Spirit said we must jump off the bridge or we must go to China... And then you disagree. Well, now you're coming against God because you must just say, yes, sir, three yeah. bags full. Anything the Lord said, how are you going to argue with us? Be wary. Be wary of people that say that the whole time the Lord said. Okay, so I've just made a note. That's a mental note, I know, because I, ju- I judge the words that come out of people's mouth. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I do it. It's quite simple. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Okay, so when someone's speaking, I listen. I try and listen as, as, as good as I can. I'm, I'm, I've, I've got to obviously improve on listening, but sometimes they're talking, I'm already thinking about what I should say. You've done that? We do that, uh, right? So anyway, I'm, let's say I'm listening. And so what I do is I get the words and they speak and they speak and they speak. And so by the time they've ended speaking, or some people don't end, they just, they just carry on, they've got a whole pile of stuff on the table. Mm-hmm. Now, whatever... The words are now on the table between you, between myself and that person, is their conversation, the words they said, is their heart. And I know this because God's taught me to do heart to heart surgery. So I do surgery. We do surgery. We do heart surgery on people. Mm. 
So I'm just giving you a little inside tip here how I work. And this is how the, I believe the Lord spoke to me and taught me this was he said in the scripture, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Yeah. So when someone is speaking, there's like a whole pile of words in front of me. And that pile, good or bad, ugly, is their heart. So then I'm looking at their heart, not looking at them. And then I, I take the sword and I dissect and I do this and I do this. And then when I start to speak and I take the sword and I do this, some people get a little bit uncomfortable because I'm actually now poking around in the heart. Yeah, Warren has a way of asking <laughs> questions that will just... <laughs> I've seen this happen over yeah, and over so again. So people like, they're rattling off <laughs> and they're thinking, okay, give it, carry on, carry on, carry on. The more you speak, yeah, yeah. the more... The, the more of your heart I got. Yeah. And it's like, okay, so are you ready? Are you are you finished now? All right, now I can address what is on the on the table yeah. based on the, the word of God, which is drilled into my spirit and into my heart over many years of studying the word. So mm -hmm. it's like, in other words, now I got, I, I, I say to him, I've got like a grid inside of me. I've got a grid yeah. uh, and God has put this grid inside of me yeah. and, and it's like this and it's like this and it's the word and some part and, I, and it's to me it's a scanner and so basically I just I scan it and then I say uh, okay so how about this thing over there yeah. and then if they are if they're humble all right they will accept it mm -hmm. okay um, they will repent or, or, because now I start to now say but, but doesn't the word say this what about this did you did you not say you know, and, you, and and this person starts complaining, but, you know, the word says we shouldn't be complaining. What about this? And slowly they start to go, oh, oh. And this is what discipleship is about, by the way, because when I ask people questions, they don't understand what I'm looking for and what I'm looking at, yeah. uh, whether they speak or not. Some people say, I've got nothing to say. So they've said a whole lot it by saying nothing. <laughs> their countenance will tell me. Their body language, everything. It's like, okay. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. So then it's like, I'm just looking for the heart because I do heart operations. We are heart surgeons. Okay, this is Father's heart. And so God, but the Lord has said we need to do heart transplants. So yeah. we got to take out that old heart, all right, and out, uh, and work with the Lord to put in a new heart. And a lot of people don't realize they, their heart is very hard and stony. I didn't yeah. know. I mean, it, God had to do that operation on me himself. Yeah. But we yeah. now help people to do heart, get, get a new heart. All right? And, uh, and a heart, you can't get a heart operation uh, by accident. You got to realize, <laughs> hey, there's something wrong with me. I've got a hard heart. I'm fighting with my heart. I'm fighting with everyone. I'm angry. It's like, okay, but years I said, Lord Jesus, please remove this heart from me. It's a very hard thing. I've been hard. My heart. Help me, Jesus. And then he did the heart operation. So I'm teaching you about how to get a heart operation directly with the Lord. And that's what we got. We got all teaching on this called heart to heart, right, with Jesus. Yeah. It's all chart, 23 diagnostic questions with the Holy Spirit. It's all course. We've got a whole course. It's actually this. in the overcoming pain at the end of the overcoming Well, no, there's two, two courses. Okay. Yeah. But it's one is linked to the next. Okay. So ultimately, if you want a new heart, you've got to be able to speak to the Lord. And instead of speaking to a counselor, yeah. people go to counsel. I don't need to go to counselor. I, I, don't, I do get counsel. But I've got the counselor in me, the Holy yeah. Spirit, and I've got that's the right. Word, and I go and study it, and He counsels with me, and that's basically what we teach people, is to get delivered, self-delivered with mm -hmm. Jesus, Holy Spirit, and Abba Father, and with the Word. You understand? It's like, hey, what, what other counsel do you need? Okay, so I believe, yes, there's, mm -hmm. there's wisdom in a multitude of counsel, so I do go for counsel. It's like when I can't hear the Lord, I can't get delivered. I can go outside mm. and say, okay, look, I'm battling with, I can't, I can't see this. Yeah. Often I go to Miriam the whole time and say, what do you think? Boom. That's actually the, the easy way. <laughs> the difficult way is rather going to seek the Lord. Okay. Yeah. But the easy way is yeah. just bounce off Miriam or, or bounce it off somebody I know that I can know that this person's got wisdom. It's actually much easier that way because it can, some, a lot of times it just comes instantly. They'll just give an answer. I think, mm. ah, why don't I think of that? Thank you very much. Boom. Yeah. So, but that's, we need to get wisdom. Uh, that's in the council okay so ultimately to get delivered your deliverance comes from you and spending time with the lord and that's where you get the new heart so when you go and bow down with your family that is the time of the heart transplant 